Welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and I'm your instructor for this course, and this is part five of our Castle Low Poly Castle series. So let's go ahead and keep moving along here. So let's just look at the reference real quick now to see what's next. Um, I really can't see anything behind uh the structure here so i'm going to assume that we do not have we just have one entrance so the back should be just a wall maybe in a couple of these spires that are sticking up we have a spire that's sticking up here we've got a longer wall along the side here and then we have a larger structure here than a little different than this one so let's go ahead and and get that modeling completed. Of course, um, I want I don't want to reinvent the wheel and have to model everything separately. That's why this is called um, modular uh, modularity, where you have uh, you create a uh, low poly asset, and you can duplicate it in the game engine and build a wall like this, but yet have enough. Uh, modular assets to make it look a little different okay so basically I'm also teaching you modularity as well in just this little assignment this kind of uh, uh, modeling assignment so and you'll you'll get more of that as we move along um, but right now um, let's go ahead and make duplications so we've got um, this wall, basically. So I'm going to select these and shift select these pieces. So I'm holding down the shift selection. You can also hit the Q key if you don't want to see that uh, marking menu. So I'm just going to select these and do a Control D, okay, and hit the W key and move it back. I can also rotate it. Okay. Now notice how rotation really doesn't work well with objects that are separated. They're not combined or anything. So this can cause an issue. So what we want to do is just control Z back there like that and move it back just a little like that. And let's just ro rotate around here and we can combine those pieces together into one uh, object and then move the pivot point so we can easily rotate it right if we wanted to okay so let's uh, let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna go to uh, mesh combine I can combine it okay we can also group it we can also group it so we could go to um, Let's see, we can go to edit and then group, and that's control G, okay? So when you see something like this, you can do um, a group. I usually don't group things, I just combine them. I'm really lazy that way because I really want to move forward very, very quickly. And we have uh, combine um, right here. Also, when I hold down the space bar, you can find under mesh combine, but you could easily group them too. You can combine. Let me show you. Let me show you. Show you both. Okay. So Control G. We'll group them, and it and it, it gives the it adds the center point there. And I can go ahead and hold the D key like I showed you before, and just move that pivot point where I want it. So when I do want to rotate it, I can just rotate it around like that along the pivot point, which makes my life a lot easier. And I can type in oh like something like negative ninety on that right and then hit the W key and move it into place okay I can do that okay or control Z on. and how do you ungroup something well you just take all these pieces you can ungroup by going to uh, selecting the group and going to edit and then ungroup okay that'll ungroup them again okay so control G to group and then you can go to edit and ungroup Okay, now what I like to do is I like to select them um, holding the shift key down and then combining, which is just this little guy here, okay, 
And then when I'm done when I, with it, and you can do the same thing, hold the, the D key and move the pivot point where you want it. And then <clears throat> you can separate. Um, so you can just hold down the space bar and go to mesh and then separate and that will separate the pieces again. Okay. Now you have to center pivot these. So what I do is I select everything when I separate them because it'll it'll like when it separates them it'll put the pivot point at the center and you'll notice that when you group them too it puts the pivot point at the center which is kind of annoying but you know it is what it is so um, you can easily go ahead and go to center pivot like all of them at once so I can click on center pivot right here like that you can also find it under modify center pivot Okay, so modify center pivot. So there's that's the crazy thing about Maya is that there are um, the tools are everywhere in different locations. So if if I want to extract the polygon, I showed you we you can go to your to, your toolkit and there's the or excuse me extrude extrude tool. You you can find the extrude tool under the tools kit toolkit, right? modeling toolkit and we also can find it um, you have a hotkey which is control E that's what I use that's the fastest control E instead of going in here and clicking on the toolkit if you have the toolkit open it's just a matter of clicking on it um, so which is faster control E or clicking on that or you know you can go to <clears throat> edit mesh and find extrude that way too as well okay or Oh, I didn't want to do that. It, it did actually. The yeah, you, yeah. Don't extrude something that you don't want to extrude. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> you just go Control Z back right away. <laughs> um, so uh, you can also find it when you hold down the space bar. See, I I like to hold down the space bar instead of going up into uh, all the way up here because that takes time. The space bar is uh, marking menus. So you hold it down. Hold down the space bar and this will pop up. This is a marking menu. And we have all our um, tools for our poly meshes right here. So edit mesh, we've got mesh tools, we've got mesh display. So mesh has the combine and the reduce tool, reducing polygons and triangulation, quadratic. Um, so we've got quad quadrilate. Quadrang quadrangulate, <laughs> which makes tries to gives you give you quadrangles when you have triangles, and that doesn't really work that well. It looks really bad, um, messes up your mesh. So I don't usually use that much. Um, so edit mesh is your tools. So your main three is mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools, and then I use mesh to display sometimes to reverse normals and to harden and soften edges. Okay. So you'd be using those, but those are the three, and I usually hit the the space bar to to show up the marking menu. Okay. All right. So with that done, now we just have to once we got that all finished and we got you know that kind of arranged, then we've got to kind of duplicate what we see here. So I'm not really worried about that being right there. So there's like two walls. So and this will be at the end. Okay, so I'm going to put that back here. So I'm going to put this fairly close to the back, kind of like what you see there, and we've got a long stretch of wall. Okay, so instead of uh, taking this and scaling like that, that would kind of stretch everything. So um, this is kind of where modularity comes into play, where I can hit the W key and just reuse that wall over and over again. And again, this is something that they use in the industry for game engines. So I'm just gonna, I don't want any gaps here, but I, I don't want, so I'm just kind of zooming in, scrolling my middle mouse button in closer and closer. Also kind of a tip here, if you get really close to this and I hold the Alt key and the arrow key down, the down arrow key, it will get it closer. You can see that moving away and I'm holding the alt and my down arrow key okay depending on uh, what direction you're trying to go so if I want to go to the side I would use the side arrow key so alt hold down the alt and the side arrow key will move it that way and the other arrow key side arrow key will go that way okay so get that as close as I can and then I can select them both 
and do a control D, right? And that will give me even a longer extension of these walls, right? So I'm gonna go up here and again, I can use my Alt and my down arrow key and that will take a long time. So what you wanna do is get it started, get it close, right? Before you do the Alt, cause that, that's kind of pixel by pixel, right? So that takes a while. Okay, so now I can I can do the down arrow key. I'm close enough now. And get it perfectly fit. There we go. There might be a little gap there, but that's okay. Okay, so um I don't think it's as I don't think it's a perfect square, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this like to there. Let's go to the top view again. I like using the top view a lot and the side views to get me centered. Make sure those there's no gaps in the geometry. Again, you'll get used to kind of flipping around like what I'm doing here. And just hitting the space bar going from viewport to viewport. You see me do that a lot to make sure everything's aligned. That looks pretty good. It looks pretty good in perspective too. Your final viewpoint should be the perspective, right? Okay, to keep everything going. All right, and then we have another wall between those two. Again, I don't think this is a perfect square, so I'm going to do Control D with the last with the last wall here. Get that set up, and then do the spire here and get that set up to our final piece. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that looks kind of more like what we have in the image, I think. And of course, you you know you can um, you can probably notice that I might have a, too much wall here. We could probably take a piece of wall piece out and move those two pieces closer together. That might look a little bit better, or it'll. Again, you know, I I can make this as big as I want to. Kind of have fun with it but it's really up to you how you want it to look. You want at least at the size of that, okay? And I noticed that with my walls, I've got a little gap there, a wider gap than I, than I would like. So I might have to overlap these to get the look that I want, right? So, and that's okay if you overlap. If you have textures, though, it could be a problem. Right now, just overlapping is okay. So when you have an extended wall like that, you have to think about that when you're creating modular pieces. Okay. So creating a modular piece would be, I would have that little piece here, and then I would model that piece out. That way, when you put them together, you know, it will work. And that's easy enough to do. Um, I could take, you know, uh, delete those polygons here. Let me give you kind of an example here real quick. Um, so I could delete these um, faces, but that leaves a gap there. Okay, But I can easily fill that gap in with fill hole tool, or I could use um, a tool, let's see, a pen to polygon tool, and uh, just reset the tool. Okay and this kind of click on one edge and just kind of follow the arrows and let's click on that side over there hit enter and that fills that hole that way you do have a truly modular piece now so when I put it up there against it we don't have any fighting um, uh, issues with textures because if you have two textures over top of each other then that can be a real problem okay all right so I'm, I'm going to leave it as is um, because uh, unless you unless we're going to texture this so um, and, it, and if that's the case we are you're, you're going to texture then you're going to want to do that real quick okay so go ahead and do that um, I'm going to delete go ahead and pause the video and and kind of replay that again and watch me do it it's pretty easy to do um, I'm going to uh, delete these or replace these later right now I'm going to keep them Put this against here like that and then we'll have this will be a little closer this way like that 
Let me get to the top view. Again, it's really hard to tell how close you are to this stuff. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and select these two, move those forward like that. There we go. Okay, so there's our modular piece, as you can see, right? And when you, you know when you're not close enough, you see that little like that little line there. So I that bothers me a little bit, especially when you're rendering. So you can see that I'm not. Maybe I am close enough, but it looks like I see like a little. So I'm gonna do the Alt and then arrow key down. Whoops. Here we go. Just to tighten that up a little bit. So if you see little gaps like that, here we go. Okay. So we've got that all finished, that wall, by just duplicating. Doesn't have to do a whole lot of modeling. Now, the problem is that we do have a different piece back here. It's larger. Okay, so let's go ahead and scale that up a little bit. And I want to scale it from the bottom up. So I'm going to zoom in, hit the F key on that. And then hold the D key and then move that pivot point down like that. And then we're going to just scale this up just a little bit, just to make that look a little different, right? Okay. And then I do, do, I do want to keep the spires, the little bricks on top, the same. Um, so what I'm going to do to make this look more like this is I'm going to add some uh, divisions here. Okay. So I'm going to hit the Q key. Okay, hold that shift key and then the right mouse button and go to insert edge loop. Okay, I'm going to click on an edge loop right here. Okay, like that. And I'm going to then um, expand this. So I'm going to click on a couple edge loops here. One there and then maybe one here. Okay. And then I'm going to select all the edge loops or just select... Um, these uh, polygons or faces here and expand them. I don't know if that'll work or not. Let's, let's take a look and see if it does. So there's a couple ways we can do this. So we go to face and we're going to select the faces and I'm going to just select, hit the Q key, go to faces and just select the faces of that. So I marquee select from the side view so it's easy selection, right? And I'm just going to expand that to see what that does. And that looks pretty cool. Expand that out and then move it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. There you go. Look at that. Maybe expand it a little bit more. Just a little bit. Got to be careful not to go too far with that. And that looks pretty cool. And that gives us kind of that shape we, we want. Well, that too much remodeling okay all right all right it's all about working smart not hard now here's a perfect example how Maya wants to soften all your edges okay so I'll click off and we really want to have a nice tight straight edge here on both on both of those so what you want to do is you want to hit the Q key and double click on that edge that goes all the way around that's nice to have edge loops that's why edge loops are so good to have um, especially for circular or organic shapes and we'll double click on this guy right here and so what we're going to do with those is we're going to hold down the space bar go to mesh display and harden edge okay perfect and then when we're going to back off here there we go like that so there's the side part, and um, I think we're finished with video five, and we'll do the back. And the, of course, the other side can be just a duplicate of what we just did here, okay? And then we gotta put the top on, and then uh, maybe work on the flags at the very end. All right, so that's this video, and I'll see you in the next video.